All right, welcome. My name is Judson Powell. Um, gonna do more than 15 minutes this time, probably. Um, got some things I wanna talk to you about, but first of all, I wanna talk about uh, decoding the Bible. And so I'm gonna do this series. In fact, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do it every day and try to uh, decode it for you so that you understand what you're reading. First of all, the Bible is not a book of history. It's not a, a prophetic book. Well, it is prophetic in a way because it, it manifests the destiny of, of, uh, of the Europeans uh, in the world. But as far as everybody else, it's really not that for you. So uh, I just want you to understand what you're reading. It's a book of astrotheology and it is a book of astrology. Okay, so astrotheology and astrology, that's what you have. And basically what it's doing is it's telling you how you as a human being relate to the entire universe all right and so as you relate to the entire universe now there is truth in it don't get me wrong the whole thing is not is not lies that's why the encoding okay but only the people the aristocracy the people that had intelligence or who were smart enough were able to basically decode it all right or encode it and then decode it and that's like on one of the scriptures says what study to show yourself approved a workman who can rightly divide. What happens when you rightly divide something? That means you take things away from it because all of it shouldn't be there, you know? So, or or you give part of it to, to one person and you give part of it to another person, but you don't give the whole thing to everybody. And basically that's what happened with the Bible. So as we go through the things that we need to learn and the things that we need to know are number one, that this book is not historical. And the people in it, actually, most of them, if you go and you do research and you find out who wrote this and who wrote that and all of that, you will find out that that all the pieces of it were written by different people. And they and it wasn't and and it's not the people that they put on the you know on the on the marquee. So it wasn't John. It wasn't James. It wasn't you know. It wasn't. Uh, uh, David or was it you know the things that people have given attributes to no it's not them okay it was written by other people and then some of the stuff that was written by the original authors okay it was taken and it was coded and it was translated and you have to realize too every time the the encodus and scriptus the encodus and scriptus language is a code if you don't know the code and you don't know what you're talking about and you don't know, then you cannot decipher the code, all right? Which is why what? Education is important and wisdom and knowledge are what? Important because you can have knowledge, but if you don't have the wisdom to decipher the knowledge, then that knowledge is doing you no good. All right. In fact, knowledge is a dangerous thing in the mind of somebody who doesn't have wisdom, because if you don't have wisdom in order to use the knowledge, you might as well not even know it. All right. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. I'm going to try to get you to understand. So the first thing that you have to understand is from the standpoint of the ancients, the ancients realized that what they were gods. They're not the most high God. They're not, you know, they're not the creator God, the, the unseen God. They're not that God, but they are gods. Why? Because we are all manifestors. Okay, and even uh, certain animals are manifestors. So knowing your ability to be able to manifest, that is very important. Why is that important? It's important because, first of all, um, the fact that you can make things happen is very, very important. Why? Because if I'm trying to uh, oppress you or I'm trying to keep you down, the first thing that I don't want you to know is that you can manifest things just by speaking them, by thinking them, uh, by, uh, by, by doing certain things to make it happen. So basically, anything that you want in your life, you can make happen. Anything. You know, in fact, you know, what's the saying? If you can conceive it and you can believe it, then you can achieve it. Well, that's very true. There's no, there's no lie in that at all. There's no, there's no untruth in that at all. Anything that you can think about, basically, you can do. And that's how come uh, during, the, during history and during time, we've seen all of these manifestations by human beings. And the manifestations by human beings were the, 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 the human beings that knew that they were manifestors and could manifest anything. So that's why you get certain people 
that are that are manifested and then you get certain people who who what who just marvel at the manifestation all right doesn't mean that they can't do it but it just means that hey that's what it is so the first thing you got to realize so that you say and i'm going to show you look in the bible get your bible out turn to what turn to uh proverbs uh, 82 and 6 so go to Proverbs 82 and 6 and you'll find right there that one of the first things that that somebody writes in there is what they write that you are God is it not written that ye are gods and then it's repeated again in the gospels uh, you know is it not written that ye are gods when they're confronting uh, the, the, the fictitious Jesus about him making himself equal to God and he said it was not, it was no big deal to make himself equal to God because he is, right? And so then everybody has the arguments, well, is Jesus God? Is God God? Is God, you know, that's not necessary because you all are God or you all have the ability. And then the name Christ, you have to understand the name Christ is simply the ancient comedic name for your highest vibration or your highest level of of, of self-awareness which is your crown chakra which is outside of your body so that's how they that's how these things came about so that your Christ or your Christ uh, energy and everybody can attain it it's not something that's for it that's just for you know like like people in the church oh he's anointed it's not just for people that are anointed everybody can can get this energy everybody all right because it's in your life force all right so and, and and so those uh, you know we call them you know they're called chakras but they're just power, they're just energy that flows through your body and you understand that this energy constantly is flowing through your body right it just vibrates or it flows at higher levels with certain people why because they take the time to develop the energy if you take the time to develop the energy then guess what then you can use it in a much more uh, efficient way and it's just that some people don't take the time to try to develop the energy or they're thwarted in their attempts to to try to get this energy and, and that's what religion does so basically religions all religions were basically created to control you and to mask you look let me tell you something if chakra energy wasn't important why have several world governments done millions of dollars worth of research and study on your chakra energy and the United States government even puts fluoride in your in your water and toothpaste and everything else why why do they do it so they keep your your sixth chakra or your third eye chakra your your pineal gland from becoming open because when it's open then you can directly speak to God I'll show you and I'll show you the manifestation of that in the Bible how did it come about how did these things start and how did they get there all right so the first thing you have to realize is that what? You are a God and that you are a manifester. That anything that you think about or can conceive, can write down, uh, anything like that. And you know that these principles line up with a lot of stuff that people preach from the pulpit. You know that they, they, they preach this stuff all the time. You know, uh, write the vision. You know, what's the scriptures? Write the vision and make it plain. Uh, so that, you know, so that the, the person that, that sees it can run with it, right? You know, write it down. Saying, you know, I remember I used to uh, one of the one of the things you teach. Saying is sowing. So saying something is sowing a seed into it. Uh, speaking life, uh, talking about speaking life over people. Uh, uh, being able to, you know, speak healing. Praying the prayer, praying the prayer of faith over somebody so that they can be healed, uh, which is something that appears in in the epistles. Uh, you know, all of these different things they all come about because of what because of our ability to be manifestors and the fact that we are spiritually gods we are not the most now now and and this is where we will we will get it together you are not the most high god you need the most high god in order to manifest the things that you want to manifest why because the most high god the unseen god is the god that creates all of the supply that you need so when so when the scriptures say that that you were created and then the most high blessed you that's true because what the most high blessed you with all of the things that you need in order to be able to manifest whatever it is 
that your purpose, your necessities, anything like that, in, 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 in inquire, okay? So as you go through life, you have to know that those things, you already possess them. You're not looking, just, and, and that's one of the, and I've, I've preached about this before, is one of the biggest fallacies in the church is that you're waiting on a blessing. You are not waiting on anything. All right. That is not that is not what you're doing. You are not waiting on anything because when you were created, you are created with everything that you need. OK, so don't let people tell you, oh, well, you know, you know, or or and, and that's another thing that religion does. Religion makes you think that you need something outside of you in order to be able to manifest. And that's not true. All right. Everything that you need to manifest is either here in the earth already or it's inside of you. So, and, and the, the example, once again, the example I like to use is you're building a house. You want to build a house. So, you need, you need the physical materials to do it, all right? You need the prerequisite mental uh, ability to do it because what? In order to build a house, you have to, you have to think about it. Then you have to be able to write it down or at least be able to communicate it to somebody else. And then you have to what? You have to do work, all right? which is what one of the 13 sacred keys is the is is work it's a universal law it doesn't matter who it is okay and so let's let's juxtapose that to slavery in slavery the slave master what did they do they got other people to fulfill the sacred key of work all right so they got slaves in order to fulfill sacred keys of work and so that's what they did so the entire time you know it wasn't that it wasn't that it was they all they were doing was they looked and they said, OK, here's one of the sacred keys. So, OK, I got all of this stuff, this, this and this. Now we have to put it to work. And that's how they were able to manifest what all of these different things that they manifested. But they used the the universe, the system of universal law. And so, for example, another one, gravity. Gravity is a universal law. It affects everybody equally. It doesn't matter whether you're Jewish. It doesn't matter whether or not you're a Pentecostal, whether or not you're a Baptist, whether or not you're a Seventh-day Adventist. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, Jew, Gentile, uh, black, white, Puerto Rican, whatever you are, okay, the, the law still works the same. Just like if you don't work, if you don't put effort and work behind what you do, it won't manifest. It doesn't matter who you are. Or even if you don't, even if you get other people to manifest it for you, they're still doing what? They're still doing the manifestation. All right. All right. So now, same thing. Gravity. It's a universal law. There's, it's always going to be the same. A man in China, he throws a rock up in the air. It lands. Guess what? It lands. A man to, and, and then go and there's a man standing in Australia. He throws a rock up in the air. Guess what? It lands because of the what? The universal law of gravity. All right. It's going to be the same for everybody. And so that's why after a while, like of being in the ministry and, and working for all these different people in ministry and preaching and teaching and doing all this stuff, I've come to realize that the universal laws, that's really the, the, the manifestation of the Most High. Why? Because it's fair to everybody. And wouldn't the Most High really be fair to everybody? So all this stuff about cho these people are chosen and these people are not and this, that, and the other thing, it's not true. It's simply not true. It, you know, because, and, and, and then people align themselves with what's ever comfortable for them. You know, so they read a scripture or whatever. And the scripture, the scriptures are not historical they're not prophetic just like you don't think you know I, like i ask people all the time so you mean to tell me like during the second world war uh and, and if you were and if they were dropping bombs out of the air on your house every day or or you know you don't think that those people didn't think that it was the end of the world you know or say you know like i, I posted the other day you know you hear wars and rumors of wars yeah that's because people start them it ain't got nothing to do with ain't got nothing to do with the most high. It's got to do with somebody trying to manifest a war. And so they do, they say and they do whatever is necessary in order to manifest that that thing to happen. Right? That and that's what it is. So you go, you know, just like uh what the weapons of mass destruction. Nobody never found no weapons of mass destruction, but just the words 
that the weapons of mass destruction existed and the words that we got to protect ourselves. And then what? The, the, the number one motivator of everybody is fear. That's like when the Bible constantly talks about fear not. It says fear not, fear not, fear not. But then on the, in the next sentence, it's talking about your destruction. So it's, it's hypocritical. So that's why you have to know how to decode it and decipher it so that you know what is what. Because if not, then you're just going to be afraid of everything. People don't even... Look, there are people who right now are turning this message off because they're afraid. There are people... The religion makes people so fearful, you know, and then talks about, you know, how you're going to reach this paradise after you die. But guess what? All of those books, they talk about eternal life. But guess what? You already have eternal life. The minute that the, minute that the life force, the minute that energy is put into your body, you know, which is which is in the Bible, uncoded is what? That you were that the breath of life was breathed into you. Right. That's energy. OK, as soon as you as soon as you possess that energy, that energy can never die. And if we know the laws of physics, anybody that knows the laws of physics knows that energy, it can't be destroyed. It can only be transferred. Energy can't be destroyed. It can only be transferred. So it's going to go into another form. And that's the same thing with you. Right now, your spirit, your spiritual energy is inside of your physical body. But when, but when, you're, when your energy leaves this body, it's not going to die. It's got to go someplace else. And it can go to whatever plane it wants to. So just because you're not on the physical or material plane does not mean that you don't exist. And you even know that through your levels of consciousness. Just like where do you go when you dream? But the dream seems real, right? And it is probably real, right? I mean, think about it. Think about all the different levels of, of your spirit, where your spirit can go, what you can think about, what you can imagine. All of these different things are all different levels of consciousness. That's all they are. And so when you are able to master your levels of consciousness, all right, that's when you get to what the ancients called the Christ. All right, the, the ability. That's why even in the scriptures, what is it? What is it referred to as? Who can what break the seventh seal? The book of Revelations, right? Who can break that? Who can break the seal to get into that area where, where, uh, in fact, the, what the Apostle Paul talked about that? How he was in what? He was in an area and he heard he heard the gods uttering things that that man should not hear, right? Daniel went to that went to that area, right? Think about think about if you if you really read the Bible. Think about the things that you that you saw and the things that manifested in these in these characters' lives. They weren't these were not these were not uh, actual stories. These are talking about how you, as a as a human being, can relate in what the metaphysical world, because your 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 consciousness is made up of all of that. You aren't always wide awake. You know, even there's even a, you know, because we always talk about in meditation, like in meditation, there's a sweet spot, right? And in that sweet spot, it's like you're almost asleep, but you're not asleep, but you're awake, but you you can hear your own thoughts. Right? So even in, the, even in those states, right, you are in different levels of consciousness. And as you are awakened to those different levels of consciousness, then your ability to use your energy to be able to be a manifester, it increases or decreases according to what? Your vibration. All right. And so and which is what? Another universal law, the universal law of vibration. If you are vibrating at a higher level than everybody else around you, guess what? Then you will outshine everybody else around you only because what? Because of your vibration level or because of the, the level of, of, of your energy. So everything has to do with that. And so we're going to start decoding uh, what it means in all these different things in the Bible and how they how they relate to your to your physical, you know, and material being, but as well as how they relate to your spiritual spiritual level. 
because that's what spirituality is really about is learning how to make your spirit go to a higher level anyway that's gonna do it hit the like hit the subscribe hit the share button i love you all i'll be back tomorrow i'm gonna do this every day love you